uh, so much has transpired uh, since March when things were shut down. We're not too far away from game one. Do you feel like you're a better basketball player now than you were when the season concluded? Um, I do think I'm a better basketball player than when the season concluded because although things ended really shortly, thinking about it in a positive way, we did have more time to, you know, train on ourselves, work on our ourselves like personally. So this summer I did take it very seriously and I was working out multiple times a week, improving my game. So I'm very excited for this upcoming season. Brittany, I know we're going, you know, back, you know, seven, eight months now, but how did, how did you kind of process how last season ended? I mean, I know there was a serious health crisis going on, but, you know, you were getting ready for potentially playing in the, in the NCAA tournament. There was a good chance UCF would have gotten an at-large bid. So as players, how did you kind of process and, and come to terms with that? Um, the season ending the way it did was obviously devastating. We had goals that we were trying to reach. We were super excited for the things that we've been working on. But then again, like COVID has been fatal for certain people. It's an extreme, like health, it's serious health condition. So I personally just feel like it was the best decision. So like it also like, it really sucked, but it was the best thing that could happen for all of us to keep us safe and the way it ended. So I just feel like that was a good decision. It sucked, but we had to do what we had to do. And now we're just going to keep moving forward. Uh, Brittany, how do you mentally prepare yourself for a season unlike any other where you have no idea what the slate's going to look like? Uh, you have no idea what all the safety protocols are going to look like. And you have to step up now as an upperclassman and, and lead your teammates into the abyss. How do you prepare for that? Well, I mean, you just have to play by ear because like you said, like we don't know what we're expecting. So we just every day at practice, we practice like it's our last we take everything extremely seriously because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow so right now we're just gonna keep practicing super hard preparing for our season preparing for you know after season but you just kind of have to play day by day and control what you can control hi Brittany um I had talked to you last season a couple times and every time I talk to you you kind of um, highlighted the leadership role that KK had on the team last season. So with KK not on the roster, how are you planning on taking over that leadership role, especially in a season that's so uncertain this year? Um, KK was, as everybody knows, an extremely good leader. And she also did a really good job preparing other people to take on leadership. So I feel like playing under K playing with KK and leading with KK, I and really prepared to do like do what I have to do and the other leaders on the team are we're really prepared um every team you know loses one of their best players it's just like it's how college basketball works so I feel like it's there's other teammates that are gonna have to step up and I mean just keep it going Uh, how has it been different this year compared to last year? Obviously, social distancing, you're looking at the coach with a mask, but uh, once you're on the court practicing, is it different or is it the same? Um, well, we had to accommodate to um, the Kobe rules, obviously. So we're a really big, touchy team. We love high-fiving, getting close. So it's just kind of like we have to know that we need to keep a little bit of distance. We do um, elbow taps instead of high-fives. Um, our water breaks were all spread out. We just try to keep it, we try to touch way less than we usually do to keep us going. Britt, Scott Adams, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. So, so tell us how coming into UCF and being recruited by, by this program, and there was already a level of success that they've had, and you've tasted a lot of success. So now what is it like to be a little bit more of an elder stateswoman, and then you get a new, a new group of ladies that are coming in where you're having to now kind of tell that story and, and let them know, hey, this is, this is how it is. We win on a regular basis. Um, obviously, Abe has made this program into a winning program. So I feel like all of our recruits and freshmen that come in and transfers kind of know like this is a winning program. So like, this is what we do. This is how we do it. And it's going to, it's going to bring like positivity at the end, like 
we know what to expect. We're going to work extremely hard to get to where, you know, to get to winning. So I feel like me being like kind of like an elder on the team now, um, it's just like I kind of take on that role of preparing the younger people, like letting them know, like, this is what we expect. Like, this is what we do. This is how we're going to do it. And yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, Brittany, um, seeing everything that's been going on in the world, obviously with COVID and other sports leagues, some have limped to the finish line. Others have been triumphant in their success. How safe do you feel as an athlete going out there, not in a bubble situation, potentially traveling around the country, traveling around the state and being subject to all these new protocols? Um, I feel pretty good about it. I feel like we are taking the necessary precautions to keep us safe. My teammates are doing what we need to do. My coaches do what we need to do to keep everybody safe. And I'm, I'm feeling really good and really positive about it. But even though like we are learning new things about COVID every single day, like you can never know what to expect. So honestly, just like staying positive, control what you can control. Um, I feel like I'm pretty positive about it. I feel good. I feel safe. Brittany, once the season gets underway, you're playing games and you're moving full speed ahead. When all said and done, what is going to make this a successful season? Uh, we just need to continue doing what, we're, what we've been doing. We need to focus on what we always focus on, you know, like strong defense, you know, same mindset as last year. It's, it's all, I mean, it's all the same. It's just that we have to be more precautious with, you know, COVID and everything, but we have the, it's the same exact strive that we have going into this season and Brittany, with it being Halloween week, I've been asking some of the football players this week about, you know, what their favorite memories of dressing up for Halloween, if they had a favorite costume. What about you growing up? Do you have a, when you think about Halloween and you see the little kids trick or treating, do you kind of think back to when you were a little girl or some, some special costume you had? Um, when I was little, I actually did dress up in a, like a full gorilla costume. My mom has like this cute little picture of me and my sister. And it's honestly like one of my top favorites. It was so cute. I had like it was like a full, only my face was out. It was a full like brown gorilla suit. I'll never forget it. <laughs> hey, Britt, now that, that Connecticut is now out of the league and, you know, there was the stat of they had won 150 consecutive games in the American. That is now to the wayside. You, this UCF team, every other team in the American, I, I think going into a season has a feeling like this league can be captured, this title can be ours, and we don't have to, to worry about UConn anymore. W what are your thoughts now that Connecticut has moved on from this league and, and what challenges um, maybe this, this season in the American? Um, I mean, UConn was an extremely good competitor, but now that they have left our conference, it's way more opportunities for other people to shine. Um, we're just extremely excited to see like what we can do this year, how much better that we can do. Like, we're just gonna strive for that spot. And I mean, it's just really good vibes. Uh, and lastly, Brittany, um, being in Orlando, born and bred, coming up through the system here, uh, pride of Boone, now that you step into this leadership role here, uh, let me ask you, I mean, how much more important is it for you to bring success to this program, given your roots? Um, it is extremely important for me. Like you said, like I'm homegrown, I'm from here. Um, I plan on finishing it out here. It's just extremely important for me to give back to my community in a way, shine out for um, Orlando. Um, it's just, that's extremely important. It's extremely important to me. But I mean, I also have super amazing teammates that are going to help us all get to that exact same spot. So it's just going to be an amazing accomplishment. All right, coach. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you. You too. Uh, with, the, with the COVID-19 restrictions, you're practicing wearing a mask, doing all sorts of things that you wouldn't normally be doing. Do you ever get frustrated or are you just so excited that basketball season's here? Uh, I think that we've been wearing this mask forever. I mean, obviously I'm outside, so for fresh air, but, um, you know, I think we're excited. The season is here. I think that, um, you know, it's been, it's, been, we've just had to go through some different things, you know, and just had to be really creative with, in terms of our team, in terms of recruiting, in terms of just everything with this, 
COVID situation. And, you know, our teams had to be very disciplined and structured and really take care of each other. And it's, it's, um, you know, it's kind of helped with team bonding and everything. So, you know, I try to always look at it as a positive and find some good things out of it instead of negative. Hey coach. Um, we keep hearing this from coaches across different sports leagues that have been running during this pandemic, the challenges, the extra challenges that these seasons have produced for them. How do you prepare your team with so much uncertainty, regardless of it's the schedule or protocols or any way in which they go about trying to maintain any sense of normalcy? Well, we do a lot of Zoom calls, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, and just try to talk them through it. I think they understand now. I think they're they're well aware of, you know, the whole country's in the same situation. Every team's in the same situation, you know, our men's team, the football team, everybody. So we just try to communicate with them as best as possible. And, you know, we started out practice three groups. We started in the weight room, three groups, and then we switched to two groups. And so they're kind of used to it right now. And we're just trying to slowly, you know, continue to get them in the weight room is my biggest thing because they missed the whole summer. They didn't get to come in June for summer school. And that's usually when we you know, do all the weight room stuff. So we're just trying to keep them really strong in the weight room and just, you know, take it step by step, knowing that our season is not going to start till November 25th. Hey, Coach, Scott Adams, good to see you. I got a, a, a quick question. Hey, so I've asked a bunch of coaches the same question in, in regards to the pandemic. Is a, a season or leading into a season like this, does this help maybe mature student athletes even more so than it that it typically would because of the level of responsibility that they feel on their shoulders where you know we don't want to let our team down if we don't adhere to the the, the rules and and some of the the health guidance i mean it's one thing for a, a student athlete to come in as a freshman a sophomore and then this is another level of responsibility on top of them it sure is i mean i think frustration was the first emotion that they are they were all experiencing and we saw that and so we tried to do some you know fun zoom calls and then now i think anxious a little bit because it's getting closer to the season and you know they want to be in really good shape and now you know coming out with these picks i think we just got to kind of talk it through them and just you know let them understand that everybody Everybody's in the same position. I mean, we're all in the same position. I mean, I talked to plenty of coaches and, you know, we're all just trying to figure out how to, you know, walk our three team through all this, this new water we're swimming through, you know? So, I mean, it's just a, it's just a day to day. I try to take it day by day, everything. Coach, uh, I know the season starts next month and I'm not sure if any programs have finalized what their schedule is going to look like. Um, I know you maybe don't have all the answers right now, but what are you hoping a non-conference schedule looks like? Is there a tournament maybe you can play in? Are you trying to maybe stay in Orlando or stay you know, within Florida for some of the non-conference? What do you think it might look like? Well, I just, you know, obviously preseason for pretty much every school in the country is five games. So, you know, right now we've got those, but it's just going to depend on game by day. I think that every school in the country, if they got their first game on November 25th, I mean, some may have it on the 27th. I think the first games are going to go by, by good. You know, I think those will be the good ones. And, and then you'll hear of some teams not being able to play, not being able to play their next game. And I think it's just going to be a game by game situation that we all have to, every college coach in the country has to prepare their team for because they're just like football. Some games aren't going to be played. Some games are going to be postponed and uh, changed to a different time. So we're just going to have to, you know, take it step by step. Is there one phase of the game right now on your team that you're really happy with? You know, I think of other sports. I think of baseball. They say early in the season, pitching is always ahead of baseball because hitting is such timing. Uh, as you inch closer to the season, is there a part of your game that you feel really good about and maybe a part that you're hoping will catch up? Well, uh, our post players. Our post players are phenomenally experienced. I mean, we got everybody back, you know, and – and have tons of playing experience in Brittany, obviously, Mawsony, Jenea, Destiny. Um, and then we added a freshman. So our post players are really strong. Where last year was our guard play, right? Well, obviously, Brit Brittany and Moss were really phenomenal last year. But I think our post players are our strength. So now we got to 
you know, work on finding some numbers from our guards. I mean, Diamond Battles can step up and do that. Cortezio Saunders can step up and do that. And then we're looking for, you know, who's going to be the next one up that can, uh, you know, step up and put some points up at the guard spot. So I think this year is going to be, you know, a lot of our points are going to be coming from our post. Um, and then as we get going, you know, I think the, our guards will kind of fill in and step in. And because I think that, you know, in practice, we've been working on Brittany getting doubled, Moss getting doubled, and how we're going to handle those kind of things. Um, and then people just stepping up and being confident shots. So to answer your question, I think our strength is our post play this year. It's hard to replace anyone that leaves a legacy like KK did for this program. Then there are the expectations of someone like Brittany, who's voted preseason first team. How do you get across that message to someone like Brittany that it's not necessarily following in the footsteps and replacing someone, but kind of blazing your own path? What kind of conversations have those entailed? Well, I mean, just that. I mean, I think she knows that. I mean, she knew from last year, and I think she knows that, you know, I've had a talk with her and just saying that, you know, she she's – she looks great, you know, and, um, but I think Brittany is so her teammates love her so much. And I think Brittany relies a lot of on her teammates and a lot of her teammates getting her the ball and her teammates give her so much confidence. And obviously we do. And I'm always, I've always been a post coach. So we're going to find different ways for Brittany to score and Mossy to score and destiny to score and Janae to score and, you know, everybody to score. But I think it's not going to be like KK where she could create her own shot and get things off. I think with Brittany, her teammates are going to really allow her to get shots off. Does that make sense? So, you know, somebody's got to hit some big shots on the outside and Moss is going to have to really be a great high, low, you know, player for um, Brittany. And so is Janae and so is destiny and our guards. I mean, diamond battles is a great passer. She can get people the ball. You know, she's super tough. She can drive and kick and do all kinds of things. So, I mean, I think that it's going to be a responsibility for the whole team to, really help Brittany out. But Brittany's been working really hard. I mean, I think Brittany understands too. It's not all about scoring. I think Brittany's been working really hard this summer to be in great shape because she knows. And at the end of the year, we talked about that, that you're going to have to play a lot more, many more minutes. And so you're really going to have to, she was in great shape already, but she knows that she's going to have that responsibility to be in the game a lot longer. Um, so does Moss. Um, and so I think they're just a, dynamic duel together those two so it's going to be interesting to see you know how they how people guard us because you know we got those two and that those not a lot of teams have really good post players that you know are, are back to back to back players and we got four four player four posts that have played a significant amount of minutes so I think Brittany's going to rely on everybody Hey, hey, coach, every coach going into a, a new program, a new situation, they want to they want to build that culture. They want to be able to, to succeed. You've been here now. This will be your fifth season, four consecutive years, 20 plus wins going to the, the postseason. There's now a level of expectation. How has this now helped your coaching staff from a recruiting standpoint? And then also for the ladies that you do bring in, knowing what has been before them, that's what we expect now when you step out on the floor. You know, I, I don't think I have to say anything anymore. I think our leadership is so good. I mean, Mossy, Brittany, and Diamond are the captains, and they know, and they they like, you know, I feel like, you know, the end of last year, they all felt like, oh, we didn't get an opportunity to play postseason. So I think now they're super hungry. Um, and like Brittany said, you know, UConn was so awesome to have in the conference, and we're really going to miss them and their fans and everything. But now, you know, pretty much in, in the league that we've been able to play and compete against everybody. And so I think, I think they're probably super excited about, you know, the year and um, you know, and that also that, you know, everybody, I think at first they're worried about, you know, their season not being here just because of COVID, but now that the NCAA came out with the waivers, you know, I think they'll be more confident to no matter how many games we play, knowing that they could come back another year. Coach, uh, I wondered about your thoughts, the league going to 20 games, of course, no UConn, but also the conference tournament going to Texas. Your thoughts on some of the tweaks there as far as the league's concerned? Well, the league, the league we tweaked that uh, for this year and this year only just because we were so concerned about games. Um, you know, it's really hard to get games right now. We didn't know what we were. We were 
the, the league and the head coaches, we've had many, 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 many conversations about what to do. And we, we just talked about that. Like this year, we're going to have to, because we can control our conference and our schedule. And, you know, if we miss a game, we can reschedule, but out of conference, if you lose a game, you're probably not going to be able to reschedule that. So, you know, we talked about that a lot and that we're going to, um, play 20 this year and go back to 16, you know, uh, after this year, hopefully, you know, hopefully this COVID is going to go away. So we just would really, we just really wanted our players to have an opportunity to play and have as many games as possible to play this year. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, the tournament in Texas, I think it's going to be fun having it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of excitement and things going on with the men teams there too so we'll be able to watch our men's team and see a, it's going to be like a festival of basketball I think it's going to be really fun there coach everybody likes the young players the fresh faces the ones that we don't know anything about might you have some players on your team that we don't know a lot about right now but we're going to find out in a hurry in the next few weeks or next couple of months I think it's like the players that were sitting out, you know, that, that kind of injured and there's a couple transfers that may get some waivers, you know what I mean? So um, there's not, I'm not going to name anybody particular because I really want them to fight for that, that position, right? I'm a big believer that everybody gets a great opportunity. So, um, you know, we got, we got several one, two, three, four, five, six people that could really step in and, you know, share some minutes. So, you know, we like to play a lot of players, so that's kind of how our thought process is going to be. 